Don Lemon, you know by now, interviewed Elon Musk, didn't he? As part of his deal, presumably, uh, you know, he got that show on X. But like many of us were surprised, I think, when Don Lemon announced he was going to be doing a show on X. Perhaps we're a little less surprised that that show has, like, it's not actually been on. It's been, it's like uh, Shane Gillis on SNL. Shane, you're on SNL. Get out of here. How dare you? How dare you? It's like it's a reverse cancellation and Don Lemon couldn't get back to CNN quick enough with what he could hold in his fist of Elon Musk's scalp, which may not be worth too much when you look at it. Let's have a look at the reporting uh, that's uh, available to us now. Let's have a look at Musk v. Lemon. First he was fired by CNN. Now he's been let go by Elon Musk even before his show appears on X. Don Lemon says his first guest was supposed to be Musk himself, but after the interview, Musk canceled his show. Fireworks between former CNN week. host Don Lemon and billionaire Elon Musk. Fireworks! So that was that news. Now we're into this news. This is getting pretty mad with the, the, the spiral. Lemon on the street and carrying Starbucks coffee. Why's that detail in there? It, Don Lemon in the street carrying Starbucks coffee. Is that to diminish him, do you think? Broke the news today that Musk has abruptly canceled his new show that was set to debut next Monday on X. Elon Musk is mad at me. What caused the show to be yanked? Lemon says he conducted an interview with Musk to air on his first show, but the tech titan didn't like it. I asked him to do it. He willingly agreed to the interview. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times. It is tense. Have you seen bits of it yet? I've seen bits of it. And you know when you're watching people sort of on the precipice of an argument, you think, oh no. I, if I was there, I'd have tried to take, I'd have tried to take the heat out of it. I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange, but apparently free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. When you watch it, it's not about free speech absolutism. That's not what's being discussed. He's not banning him from X. He's saying that he's not going to fund a show on X, which is, I guess, a business decision probably based on the terrible lack of per chemistry between them. It's a really awkward, awkward exchange. But it is interesting these conversations are taking place. You may have seen Tucker and Cuomo, that little thing. Am I saying his name? Chris Cuomo? Cuomo? Musk reportedly sent Lemon's reps a terse text declaring contract cancelled. I like that. He's not even actually used a verb. Contract? Yeah. Cancelled. According to a report, the question that really set Musk off concerned his ketamine use. He was also said to be upset over questions about the upcoming presidential election. I did this deal because not only do I believe in free speech, but I believed that this was the best possible chance for the work that I'm doing to reach the largest amount of people. Musk immediately responded. Uh, this is good, actually. What's this quote from Musk? His approach was basically just CNN, but on social media, which doesn't work as evidence by the fact that CNN is dying. CNN is dying. And where did Don Lemon go to tell this story? Back to CNN. He says contract is canceled. What happened? Yeah. First of all, it's good to see you, Aaron. Thank me you for too. having me on. He became temporarily a kind of pawn in the independent media versus legacy media war. Now, Musk points out here that Social media is a different space, it's a different discourse, different type of rhetoric, different type of speed, different type of pace. It's not an easy gig to exist in all of these spaces. You'll note that if people that are now native to social media and independent media in particular, which exists primarily to offer critiques on the kind of stories that legacy media will either not report upon at all or report upon badly and in order to favour the establishment agenda. These are different worlds now. Now, I know that when my stuff blew up a few months ago, when I was attacked by, and I would say, by government agencies, by legacy media, by private government-funded proxies, I temporarily became a pawn in this game. You see it happen from time to time. As these power struggles begin to unfold, you'll see that they sort of vacuum in different figures. And I, you know, I guess those of us that thought, Don Lemon on X, is that gonna work? now know that it won't work, it won't work. But nevertheless, it remains a very terse, awkward exchange. Like, you, I don't like watching it. I must like, even though I think of myself as like being a person that's willing to get involved in confrontations and stuff, I feel a lot, of, you know, I feel nervous when I watch this stuff. There's a whole lot that went down and I'm gonna tell you about in the coming days. 
Lemon says the interview will still be posted, but it'll be on YouTube. Note that that gets pulled off X and put on YouTube. These are big tech giants that have contracts of compliance with the United States government or the set of interests that we generally refer to as establishment. You know, Microsoft have massive deals with the government. Apple have massive deals with the government. YouTube do. You don't need, uh, like, you remember the correspondence between Zuckerberg and Fauci during the pandemic period. Is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, what you could do is you could censor true information. That'll be really helpful. If when the Barrington Declaration comes out and people say, hey, why are you locking down in the middle of a pandemic? You don't vaccinate during the middle of pandemics. You know, like, could you not publish any of that? Could you shadow ban it and uh, de-amplify it? You better believe it, baby. We'll do it. Let's uh, now nervously sit like stepchildren on the bottom stair as dad and his new girlfriend quarrel dreadfully. It's Musk v. Lemon. Hate speech on the platform is up. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform, that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates I to Democrats. I don't have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that... I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think... That you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that there constantly. Was... I could care less. Well, wow, he's being haughty, isn't he? He's talking to Elon Musk as if he's a representative of the establishment, chastising him. You remember when all the ivermectin stuff was going down? The, Why the hell's Joe Rogan allowed to say that? I've got a suit and tie. I've been shining my head for 15 minutes before I began this broadcast. And like Don Lemon is speaking with the authority, even though in his statement he seems to imply with the phrase people like me that there is a racial dynamic at play, which, you know, it doesn't seem to me that that's quite right. I don't know, you tell me in the chat. What's ultimately happening there is an interloper from the establishment and legacy media is reviewing, interviewing in this case, one of its new uh, stars and bright lights and taking them to task. Like he's, you can hear him sort of, in a sense, basking in praise as yet unissued. I'll show them. I'll talk to Elon Musk and I'll tell him. I'll say to him, how about that? You, uh, what are you going to say about replacement theory? We've got a video on that, by the way, on local exclusively available. You can watch that now. So he sort of thinks he's taking Elon Musk to task. And I guess when you're dealing with very powerful, very wealthy people, or perhaps anybody at all, you should speak to them with respect. You talk about your ketamine use and, and depression. Have you, you also have said... And the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, the, like, the reason I mentioned uh, the, the, the ketamine prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that can help other people. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned it. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I would say uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. You recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? I was at a breakfast at a friend's place, and Donald Trump came by. That's it. What did you discuss? I, I don't... <laughs> um, let's just say uh, he did most of the talking. Did he ask you for money? He didn't. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his legal bills? I'm not, I'm not paying, paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. Did he ask you for a donation? No. Are you leaning towards anyone? No. You're not leaning towards anyone? Because you've been... Well, let me say I'm leaning, leaning away from Biden. You're leaning... <laughs> <laughs> there are also conversations taking place between Chris Como and Tucker. Boy, do they hate it when we talk to each other. Who? The establishment. Now, the easy criticism to handle is that I am enabling the distribution of lies and bad ideas by having Tucker Carlson on. Here's the problem with that idea. Carlson has a bigger platform than anyone who is telling me to not have him on. OK, that man and his crazy cackle is bigger than most major outlets. So the idea that you can censor your way into some kind of selection of arguments that you like or don't like is over. And simply demonizing what you disagree with is not making it better. It's only making it worse. For all of these rules about who can be on and who can and how you fact check and how you don't, and what the truth is and what it isn't, why is everything getting worse? I'll tell you why. Because Carlson is not unique, except maybe for that cuckoo cackle. But as for his ideas, 
He has an audience because millions feel the same way. In a sense, the kind of conversations that used to take place in legacy media when legacy media was truly representative now can only take place in independent media as the ever-decreasing circle of censorship chokes out real debate, chokes out proper conversation, chokes out the possibility of true representative democracy. These kind of conversations will take place because, you know, Como, he was one of their own. Lemon, he was one of their own. And these people that have establishment ties have got no place to go as the censorship becomes more pervasive and more powerful. And as our man here points out, Tucker's got a bigger audience than all of them. And the simple fact is, is that while the New York Times' readership falls, while the BBC is plummeting in power, while the CNN becomes increasingly irrelevant and quite rightly, organizations of independent media become more robust, more powerful, not because of any ingenuity, tenacity, foresight of the people participating directly in the movement, but because we are able to openly communicate. Let me know what you think about these conversations and what they indicate is shifting. See, when you can't talk openly about the escalation of tension between Russia and Ukraine, the continual funding of that conflict and who benefits from it and who will ultimately suffer if it continu continually escalates, if all of the voices in media parrot the same narratives of the establishment and they declare it as a good thing, that a bipartisan bill has been passed today, this bill has support from both sides, that's not a good thing. That's not unity. That's hegemony. That's that's conformity, that's technological tyranny, and that's what we are advancing towards now. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.